is just the start of the Big 12 and Power 5 talk to come. Listen to JJ and Alex Monday on your drive home. Afternoons from 3 to 6 on 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone. Welcome back in to First and 12 here on KSL News Radio and the KSL Sports Zone. Make sure to listen to JJ and Alex every single weekday on the KSL Sports app, KSL Sports Zone. And also get any sort of KSL Sports Zone shows on the KSL Sports app. We are going to Alex Keery. We're going to have a lot to talk about tomorrow, man. JJ yes, and I are will. Firing, it, firing it up, man. I mean, look, here's the thing, too. I mean, sorry, BYU fans, but you're going to have to have this thing reflected uh, up against the 55-3 to win that Utah had yesterday. And that honestly makes days worse for BYU folks. Am I wrong, Mitch? I mean, that, that makes – it makes the day. I feel like <laughs> it doesn't make it as bad because BYU knows they're in the Big Twelve now. I think when it was Independence versus Pac twelve, yeah, it was pretty brutal. But I think now BYU feels a little bit more comfortable in their own skin, a little bit. But mm. still, I think I think it's now that Utah's coming into the Big Twelve, though maybe it does get amplified because <laughs> there's this feeling of they're way ahead of where you are as a program right now, and they're going to be joining you next year, and you're going to be seeing them the next four years. Yeah. Rough stuff. Hey, but guess what? Big 12 and our Big 12 game of the week was Bedlam. How many years of this has been played? I know it's, I know it's over 100. 100 and, I guess it's been since 1913, 1912. How long has this, been, has this game been played, Mitch? We know it's more than the 100th meeting, and it's going to be apparently one of the last, and, you know, it's going to be one of those situations where Oklahoma is like, you know, we're never going to play you guys again. And Oklahoma State's going, well, we wish we could, but you guys are acting like you're big time. And uh, we've seen that happen with a lot of series. Uh, but, hey, look at Texas A&M and Texas. It came back around. So sometimes you can't cancel everything forever. Yeah, this thing dates back to 1904. And, you know, Oklahoma's pretty much dominated the series 91 to 19 and Ooh. 7 coming into Saturday. And Oklahoma State got win. 19? Yes. That Oklahoma is... State got Win number 20 against the Sooners. You know what? I'm a, Congrats to the Sooners because, I mean, I had no idea it was that big of a disparity. I mean, that's that's crazy. You know what? It should go away. That's not even a, that's not even a, that's not even a, a rivalry there, Mitch. So, well, yeah. And I respect that Mike Gundy has basically said, we will never schedule them as long as I'm here. And you know what? I, I admire that. I mean, they, they, he's saying, if you want to leave this league, we're not going to you know, spend our non-conference schedule on you because I think Oklahoma would be like, yeah, we'll do a two for one or, you know, we'll do something like that. Kind of do the power trip thing on <laughs> Oklahoma state and Oklahoma state's not having that. So what a way for them to close out this big 12 bedlam era with a win. And, you know, I think Oklahoma state, it, it's remarkable to turn around. We talk about that every week, but I think what's been impressive about this group is just that they finally got stability at quarterback. Alan Bowman, Former Michigan transfer. I don't know if he's stealing signs. I know that's a terrible joke. I'm, I'm kidding. I know it's it's. Just, you know what? Send me out. I'll see you know myself what, though? out. You know what though? There's some point yesterday where I was going, <laughs> "Hey, listen, I I know how Michigan feels now. Like maybe BYU should have gotten involved in something just to give yourself a little bit of an edge. It's like I know winning isn't the. It's not the. It's not everything. It's not the only thing. But guess what? It it does help. It helps. Uh, Soothe your little uh, your, your neighborhood <laughs> friends, and all your fandom, and everything. But yeah, I get what you're saying. But, I mean, it, it was a crazy, it was a crazy game. That was an awesome game. But you think about Oklahoma State, great teams under Gundy. They always have star power at the skill positions, and they've got that with Ollie Gordon at running back, and then the the receivers, Brett and Presley, who had 97 yards, Rashad Owens, 136. Where were these guys against USA in September? I don't know, but that was such a turning point for this team, and they have just been outstanding. I feel like this might be – there's a case that they're the best team in the league right now because of the resume that they have. I mean, they took down they, they took down the Sooners, something that Texas couldn't do. Yeah. So Oklahoma State's playing great football right now. They're peaking at the right time. And what a huge win for them that they have the ultimate bragging rights for the foreseeable future. I mean, this is only going to be a game that's played again – if it's a bowl game, that's what Mike Gundy said. So, I know. Uh, huge win for Oklahoma State to get it done, and and for Oklahoma, I still think they're they're a really good football team. But I just think that you know some of the issues where when they need that critical defense to stop, they still just can't come through in the clutch. And you know Oklahoma State's a high-powered offense, and I'm curious to see where they climb 
in the college football playoff rankings. I think they go into that top 15 threshold after this win. Yeah, I mean, 7-2 and two is where a lot of really good teams in the country are right now. You're starting to see some separation there. But if you would have told me, like, hey, they're going to rip off some of the best. I mean, we kind of half predicted it, too. We're like, Mike Gundy likes to get his guys going late uh, in the season and kind of build up. And I don't know what team would want to take on Oklahoma State right now, including Texas, including – I mean, it's just – and think about how insane that game's going to be BYU to go down to Stillwater. I mean, the, imagine how they played last night and then their last game of the season is going down there to play Mike Gundy's team, who's going to be going, we have to win this game and we got to impress to be a part of this, uh, you know, maybe be part of a New Year's Six game, et cetera. So that's going to be a tough one. Think about, think about how bad that Oklahoma-Oklahoma State stretch sounds now for BYU Oof. fans. But, man, I'll tell you, it's, uh, it is fun. But I, I'm also a big believer, Mitch, in, in ESPN going, the the uh, the bowl scheduling gods, you know, hitting it with the old, uh, you know, the, the you know their their magic wand, and they go, you will play each other, like you know, four or five years down the line, or even better, like maybe in two years, where they're suddenly both playing one another, in uh, you know the I don't know what's even an SEC and Big Twelve matchup uh, that's like a decent one, uh, maybe like a it, sugar maybe bowl, they, a sugar bowl, uh, get yourself like an Alamo Bowl matchup, something Texas bowl. Like, Give me the give me the all military bowl. I don't care what it is. <laughs> Throw down, have a meet in Shreveport for all I care. Let's get them playing each other again. Uh, so there you go. The Bedlam series put to rest as we uh, made fun of so much at the beginning of the year. But it does sound. But it is weird now that it is over, right? Yeah. I mean, like, and I just imagine some old uh, muckety muck, you know, uh, guys who've been covering Oklahoma State forever with their uh, reading glasses at the end of their nose and just crying their self to sleep tonight on their. On their, uh, you know, on their on their pillow, probably in some well, bass, in one, some bass themed, uh, you know, man cave that they have down there in the south. But I don't know. No one thing we learned here. too, Alex, is that we should never crown teams in October after the state fair with Texas and Oklahoma. It was like, is anyone in the league going to contend with these guys? And this league's pretty good, and yeah. that the season is never defined at the state fair in mid October. Uh, and th- there's a lot of football still left to be played and all, all the premature, just, you know, anointing Texas and Oklahoma, yeah. this is still a good league. And they, they proved it once again with Oklahoma state getting that big win. We got to take a break though. Where is Oklahoma state going to show up in our power rankings? We will reveal that next. It's our favorite segment on first and 12, the big 12 power rankings get unveiled for a new week. A lot of shakeups. I'll tell you that it's going to be a lot of fun to roll this thing mm-hmm. out. Mitch Harper, Alex Carey here on KSL news radio in the KSL sports zone, taking the break, big 12 power rankings next here on first and 12.